Grand Rising, my friends. Hey there, what's up? Always missing the most beautiful subscribers in several dozen solar systems in our galaxy, moving up close to the hundreds in the, in the now we're in the dozens. What does the market look like? Bitcoin, close to 55. Hey, crazy, right? You know, we've been here, twice we've been here at 30s and 20-somethings and 40s. Now back up to 54, 8,640. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. 54,864. Ethereum at three thousand five hundred eighty-two. Cardano at two dollars and twenty-seven cents. Binance Coin four dollars and twenty-one cents. XRP at a dollar seventeen. Solana one fifty-six. Polkadot thirty-six. Shiba Inu have been going crazy, but it's come down a little bit in the past couple of days. But Shiba Inu is at I don't know some point blah 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 blah, but it's up two hundred and twenty-nine percent on the week. On the strength of, I don't know, is it on the people just now figuring out that they didn't get on Coinbase, or is it because of uh, what Elon tweeted earlier this week? You know, hey. Well, let's jump into it and not keep you guys too long today. Um, you know about that positivity, and on that note, there's somebody in your life that has touched you in some type of way that's important. You want to, not in a bad way, but in a good way, touch you. And the, um, you want to reach out to them and let them know that how much they mean to you. Then go ahead and type something nice about them down in the comment section and send it to them and say, take a look at this. Look what I wrote for you. It should last throughout all time as long as humanity exists in the cosmos as we spin through this vast medium but you know hey it's maybe not that serious the jet stream has started an unprecedented shift north north <laughs> which could wreak havoc on weather in the united states and europe so the polar jet stream circles the northern hemisphere circling swirling up to nine miles above our heads like a curvy ethereal crown on the planet this band of strong wind separates cold air from the Arctic from the warmer air to the south and is responsible for transporting weather from the west to the east across the U.S. over the Atlantic. The directions may be all jacked up when you're looking at me. If I have, I'm not considering perspective yet where I get the point. I imagine, I guess, perspective would be this way. Um, going west across for you guys, across the United States, um, east towards Europe, um, that, in that direction. It controls how wet and warm these regions are. But according to a recent study, the jet stream is shifting north. And so that becomes probably what is contributing or part of or secondary to all of these crazy weather patterns we have. And I'm so sick of everybody saying, oh, it's only once in 100 years, once in 500 years. They're far too common. So purpose of this, why I bring this up today is that it's about to get cold out, and it seems that with the third booster shots that may be helping with the, uh, you know, dealing with the coronavirus, with the vaccination, so that's good news, but it's still going to be a hard winter with the supply issues, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in the week. That um, so start preparing now for things. Anything you may think may need for a month or two. Now look, you can't, of course, have everything you need, but the essentials that that you may not consider, like you know, sponges, or you just just it's going to be the the weird supply things where things going to be out for whatever reason, for not whatever reason, because. We've been hanging by a thread, and that thread is, you know, coming a little bit unraveled in terms of the whole planet picking up the supply chain after the initial impact of that the uh, the corona the novel coronavirus. So here's a good pattern here on the screen you can see of the um, jet stream moving. So 
this is the winter is coming. Prepare for, um, you know, if you celebrate the holidays, to to think about getting whatever you're gonna give people early. And you're not looking last minute. Prepare for things not to be there that you normally had, and maybe we may have some different, you know, food quote unquote staples shortages. So you know, it's just gonna be have your mind prepare. A lot of it when I say prepare is not necessarily hey you have to have a, a a prepper's pantry with all these things, but just mentally understand that there may be difficult times and that there'll be better times on the other side of the cycle. So. Don't lose focus and panic when these things occur. You just say, okay, kind of knew this is going to happen. Just what can we do? How do we manage? So if you do get, like, medications, you may want to, uh, if you could stock up on a three-month supply just to be certain. The, the little things that you could do to make your life a little bit easier in case um, some of the bad things people are looking at forecasting happens. Now, this is completely different. We're going to talk about transferring wealth through generations of dynasty trust. So breaking it down, let's just break into what it is. So a dynasty trust is created to transfer wealth from generation to generation without being subject to the various gift estate and or GSTT taxes for as long as the assets remain in the trust based on applicable state laws. In addition, a dynasty trust can protect those assets from creditors, Divorcing spouses and other issues. So this is where you, a lot of people use an irrevocable life insurance trust, an I-L-I-T, and they transfer the assets free of trust upon death. And most living trusts are transferred the same way without the benefit of being held within trust. A dynasty trust is created in most cases by mom or dad. It can include almost any type of asset Life insurance, any type of securities you want to include, limited partnership interest, et cetera, other than qualified retirement plans. So anything other than retirement plans. The assets are held within the trust, and when the grantor passes away, the trust can be automatically subdivided into as many new trusts as you have named beneficiaries in the trust. So mom and dad have a trust. They have 50-50 stake in the trust, and the trust can have your Bitcoin, your Ethereum, all your cryptocurrency is property in your trust. If you had real estate in your trust, stock in Tesla, stock in Apple, stock in Amazon, whatever your stock was in, stock in um, um, Nano Dimension, whatever your stock is in, it could be in a trust. Uh, possessions like art, NFTs, which would be probably, yeah, you know, hey, look, separate from cryptocurrency, a crypto asset would be in a trust, physical possessions, um, stamp collections, coin collections, jewelry, if you had uh, uh, pieces of uh, uh, Hermes bags or Birkin bags that you could put in a trust, um, intellectual property, if you had publishing rights, and stuff you could put that in trust so imagine all of this and protect it for generations and so assets are held and they, they, they can uh, divide so if you have three children it divides into three new trust dividing the assets equally among the three when each child passes away the trust subdivides again for their children your grandchildren and their respective trust and again the assets are divided to equal shares the trust offers broad powers for health, welfare, maintenance, and support so the children can use the money as they deem appropriate, invest in it, or taking income out of it. The trust is protected and all the assets and the growth, therefore, are held in a trust to avoid estate taxes when structured correctly. You must have a trustee or a co-trustee and a qualified estate plan attorney drafting and executing the document. So. Something to, as you hopefully, we, not hopefully, when we build this generational wealth together as a team, as a, as a mindset, these would be some of the steps we'll take to protect that for not only ourselves, but for our loved ones going forward. And, you know, hey, you may do whatever you want. You may want to just frivolously throw it away. You may want to donate it to a charity, whatever floats your boat. But you just don't want other people making decisions for you. That's the most important thing. You can get advice from other people, you know, but you sign every check. 
that's the greatest advice you'll hear from anybody. When you get to a point, make sure when your money comes out, you're not giving somebody the power to sign checks for you. Because it's just too hard to think about. Uh, 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 uh. Crypto value soars after El Salvador uses volcanic energy to mine Bitcoin. So the, uh, if you don't quite understand, geothermic energy is used that they basically a lot of power is used in terms of um, mechanical power and electrical. I'm thinking like coal plants, coal plants, nu nuclear power plants, geothermal like this. Um, I'm thinking what would be different. Solar will probably be different, and hydro, hydroelectric will probably be different. But basically, you go heat water up. You want, you want something to heat water up, and then you produce steam. And that steam can then turn big turbines, which produce electricity. That's, for the most part, how you are producing electricity, if you didn't know. So the coal plants, you burn coal, heat up steam, steam, uh Spin the turbines, you cool off the, the water, go back. You know, if you're smart, you recycle everything. That's, course, that's what they do in the nuclear power plants, is that the water is heated up, it's cooled down. You, you, if you do it in a way, hopefully, where you don't contaminate the water, probably older plants would be, be different versus newer, where you don't contaminate the water and you recycle it and use that water that you're heating up and cooling off to power these turbines, which are spinning um, magnets inside of coils, which produces electricity. On a giant scale, right? Very simple, just, you know, down to just some simple we can talk about. Do the same with a volcanic energy. You're using that hot, you know, the, the geothermal energy for there to heat up some, you know, fluid. You know, I don't know if you just present what they use in water. But to steam and then spend some, um, spend some turbines, produce electricity, power your Bitcoin. And... It, you know what I'm saying? It's just about the, the, the technology and know-how and engineering and the, the initial kind of investment to put everything in place. And then it's kind of, yeah, it, is, is, it doesn't, you know, pretty safe. Pretty safe. So, the geothermal energy El Salvador is sourcing from its volcanoes is a creative answer to the baggage of energy consumption. Like everybody, I'm so sick of everybody talking about, oh, the energy consumption with Bitcoin, energy consumption with cryptocurrencies. What are we going to do about it? I was like, OK, what about the banks you use? Are we worrying about that? What about the the media, the 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 Internet, the source of power for all of that? Come on. It's energy consumption and everything. Now, we're trying to get our energy consumption to be all renewable powers, but to say not use energy until then, come on. How will we figure out and, and be able to make these plans for renewable if we don't? You got to spend money to make money. So that's a, a, a straw man argument about the energy consumption for cryptocurrencies because Everything has energy consumption and far greater than the energy consumption of cryptocurrencies. Regular banking. If, if OK, so you don't use Bitcoin, then, you know, J.P. Morgan, your Bank of America that that has no fossil fuel consumption involved in, in their operations or is less than the cryptocurrency. Is, is, you no. Know. <laughs> but hey. Billionaire SPAC King, SPAC are special, uh, I haven't even looked, special purpose acquisition companies uh, reveal his huge Bitcoin bet. So it's Chamath, I don't want to butcher his last name, but Palahapathia, Palahapathia, I think, has revealed he poured hundreds of millions into Bitcoin. Now, he said he bought over a billion, a million Bitcoin 10 years ago. I don't know, you know, if that was really the truth or not, but he said he poured hundreds of millions into Bitcoin, predicts that it will continue to rise. And a lot of people... You know, he he put a big bet in, and a lot of people um, are also saying the same thing. It's very hard for me to to give you a Bitcoin price prediction, I understand, but I can pretty confidently say that Bitcoin, I think, has effectively replaced gold, and it will continue to do so, and, and that market cap is just going to grow. So the market cap, we discussed this before, for gold is $10 trillion now, you know, give or take. And Bitcoin is at about a trillion now, so that's 10x just to go there, so 52 Half a million, fifty to uh, five hundred times ten, 
you know, one trillion to, to 10. That's how that works. Ratio. And then people think it'll double that because it is better than gold. So it'll at least you get a 20 million market cap, at least, you know, double what gold is doing in terms of its ability to hedge against inflation. I mean, inflation, you know, various currencies around the world. And so that is a million dollar Bitcoin. And then from there, you know, other people think you listen to Michael Saylor that it'll get into the everything will be weighed against Bitcoin, like real estate, derivatives, you know, sovereign funds that it just be like, well, how much Bitcoin you got? <laughs> so I hope everybody cube it a little bits and pieces now. Just let's be like little running in like little mice, just stealing, just making little holes that we eventually it will tear down as um, these buildings. So. I haven't put a lot of money outside of Bitcoin, obviously. You know, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, like small capital right now. It could get very big, but irrespective of what I do. Like the other cryptocurrencies, but his, his holdings are mostly in Bitcoin. So, as I said, this, we still at the very, not, not, we're not at the beginning, beginning, but we still, it's going to seem like the beginning. <laughs> you know, years from now, it's going to still seem like, from this point, I'm talking to you at we are still at the beginning of this process. So please be getting in early and often. Edward Snowden, he's been hating on cryptos because he know that they can be traced, that they, you know, the, the all you have to do is just put a name and face with a wallet in. Boom. You know exactly where everything is going. Bitcoin is stronger after except for remember, there was those mixers that people were using that were um, a lot of. Um, Internet providers don't allow people to even use those type services anymore. Bitcoin is stronger after China's crypto ban, Edward Snowden said. Contractor and Russian uh, former contractor for the United States National Security Agency who leaked highly classified information in 2013. Wow, it's been that long. Believe China's cryptocurrency ban has strengthened Bitcoin. He said, wow, OK, this is the first. I know it is, but read this, of course, already, but. It always shocks me when I say this. This is the first time in a while I felt like buying Bitcoin. I don't know how they spelled that there. It was an accident. That drop was too much panic and too little reason. We're talking about the um, the FUD with China. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. F that's what FUD stands for if I haven't said it. Well, I'm going to keep repeating stuff over and over. China even banned it, just made Bitcoin stronger because a, a lot of the money that's been coming out of China now for Bitcoin, now that they banned it, because people are like, get out of here for that. So thank you, China. And let's hope that they stick with it and we have no more discussions about it so that all growth from here is just without their input at all. And that would be nice. The ETH burns, we're almost a half a mil, half a million Ethereum. That's crazy. So I could keep y'all much longer. Happy to see y'all. And let's get ready for an interesting winter. I I I I, I would say hope for this one, because I don't know about I can't say I know for this one. But I hope all of us have a very boring, normal routine as any other year winter and we you know some moments of excitement with family and fun of excitement fun excitement and then we move into a new spring and summer where the pandemic is behind us and hopefully a lot of the legislation is passing in terms of the electrification and energy renewables because you know the gesture may move in just because a lot of it is is we have to recognize the impact we are making on our own environment kind of like uh, epigenetics i think we talked about that once but I'm talking about that again so the what happens on the large scale happens on the small scale so you can see that nature and nurture is a dance a delicate dance that goes back and forth but blah, 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 with all that said, that's my new Greta Thunberg, blah, 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 blah. I love you. You love you. God loves us. And that's all that matters.